So Reality is uh, actually under development for three and a half years now and uh, you already probably know that it is based on a popular AAA game engine called uh, Unreal Engine. Um, but a Reality is not just a plugin for Unreal that you know, does video I.O. and uh, that kind of stuff, but it is actually uh, a complete a compositing engine, a compositing pipeline, a node-based processing engine sitting on top of the Unreal Engine as, uh, as the renderer. So it's, uh, it's a really different uh, approach than what would uh, everybody is uh, doing. Um, they, uh, we, we, do, we do not um, compose it in a, you know, in a layer-based manner, but we do compose it internally in 3D. So that is, that is uh, a little bit uh, and, uh, and a huge uh, different approach okay so that's that's different but I'm, I'll tell you what it gives us during uh, during the way so we can speak about uh, the details now so if you're doing virtual or if you're doing uh, a photo reel it's really important that you have reflections because uh, when there is a reflective surface um, your brain is looking for some reflection around and if it's you know uh, natural looking uh, it will be more and more for the real. So as you can see, uh, my reflections are on the piano and this is not a fake reflection, like we do not get the live video input and use it as a texture, reverse it a little bit. No, this is just a uh, reflective surface dropped on a virtual object and the system handles the rest because we internally compose it in the rendering pipeline. Uh, we, uh, I call myself a talent when you are you know, keying uh, we, we're not just you know, um, getting the backdrop and putting on top, no, we're internally compositing in the 3D space. That's why I have reflections and not only reflections, uh, Mehmet can just stop a little bit. You can also see that my head is reflecting on uh, the uh, uh, bulb, uh, glass bulb here as well and not only uh, reflecting, it's also refracting as you can see. Okay, so this is pretty, pretty uh, unique features from reality. I can be in front of them, I can be behind them. Uh, maybe you can go uh, uh, away a little bit, Mehmet. And there are many, many other features, but we also introduced HDR uh, with reality 2.0. Uh, by HDR, uh, I mean we have end-to-end -end HDR pipeline, meaning an HDR uh, uh, capable uh, image source, our camera, an HDR renderer, and uh, an HDR output. And if you check those Sony monitors over there, these are HDR capable displays, and uh, it's a full HDR pipeline. So what is HDR and what, is, uh, what, what, will the, what good will it do for you? Well, uh, first of all, HDR is uh, quickly adopted and you will be having HDR capable displays on your, uh, in your uh, homes uh, you know, you know, in, uh, in one year or two years. So every, every production, every content very soon will be in HDR. Uh, reality is ready from today. And, uh, and if, you want to, if you want to understand how it looks, HDR means a wider color gamut. So it has more information other than the eye can see. So if you look outside uh, to, on those monitors, it's a little bit overexposed, obviously, because we are inside and looking outside, there is sunlight and, uh, uh, and, and uh, the, there is not too much detail on the trees because it's getting bloom uh, over, uh, over uh, the, the lighting. But if my friend can drop the exposure down, now you can see the sky, you can see uh, that there is uh, some clouds over there and now the tree uh, back there has more detail. Actually they were always there because uh, of the HDR but if you look to that uh, operator monitor over there you will see that this, this data is always clipped because it's an LDR display. Okay? Uh, Reality is the first and only software in the market today to have full HDR pipeline. That is truly a unique feature again. So, uh, I would like to describe a few more features, so let's go to the room. Okay, so, um, the next killer feature of reality is the reality keyer. We have our own internal keyer built into the system, which is a software-based GPU accelerated keyer that works in 3D space, okay? That is uh, truly unique uh, for, maybe you can just tilt down uh, a little bit, Mehmet. Yeah, okay. So, well, uh, for the keyer, uh, I, I shouldn't talk, I should give you some examples like this one. Mehmet, can you zoom in to my head? More? Yep. 
So this is fine hair detail. All right. Uh, if you have blonde hair later, you can come in. Our Jasmine can show you up how it works with different environments. All right. And if you uh, if you want to push it a little bit harder, I can always do you. Uh, let me zoom out, please. Uh, do you the water bottle trick? Okay. So this is a transparent object keying, which is not an easy task, as you uh, probably know. Well, with reality keyer. Uh, which we believe that is probably the best gear uh, on the market today. You have flexibility over your uh, production because you can bring in more props uh, to enrich uh, uh, your productions. And this is not uh, all of the features uh, of the gear. Reality gear can handle shadows in a very, very good way. So if Mehmet can uh, zoom in a little bit to my feet. Yep, more, more, more. Yep, a little bit up. Thank you. So as you can see, I'm casting soft shadows on the green. And reality keyer can take advantage of that. Not every keyer can do this. And uh, people, people, are, people are afraid of uh, uh, shadows a little bit. So they, they, uh, they clip it. They get rid of it because it doesn't look good. And if you clip shadows, then there are two outcomes. Uh, one, you're losing detail because you're clipping the whole area. And second, well, you're losing your shadows. That these are also important because these are used as contact shadows, as you can see. And that what makes me, you know, really look like I'm walking on the floor. Otherwise, I'll be floating. So can you zoom out, Mehmet? Yeah. You see, it really, it really gives the impression that I'm actually walking on the floor. And it is like uh, because of um, um, their inability of shadow keying, people most of the time use uh, darker materials uh, on the floor for their virtual studio, which looks really awkward, right? But with reality gear, you can have any material as, uh, as your floor. We have no problems uh, with keying that. So um, that was important. We have particles. Let's turn uh, the fire on. Mehmet, maybe you can just tilt. No, 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 no. Go down, the, down, Mehmet. Down the jib and tilt up, OK? So. Um, particles, well, we're based on a game engine, so I'm not going to talk about particles because we probably have the best particle system uh, around, including CPU and GPU particles. But the interesting thing here is that uh, a fire particle is not just a, a bunch of you know, floating textures. It is actually a, a light emitting source. So that's why when the fire is on, you can see uh, the, the, the couch side has a little bit warmer. Actually, the entire environment is warmer. We do effects that have effects, uh, post-processing effects like uh, uh, lens flares and bloom. Um, my friend can turn on uh, the lens flare. And now you can see that the lens flare is actually getting affected by the fire as well. Not only the light uh, that is coming out from the door behind me. And Mehmet, can you go down a little bit and can you look, look to me? Yeah. And if you look close enough, stop please. If you look carefully enough, you can see the heat haze of the fire is actually affecting my legs. It, may, it creates a distortion as well, as it would do in real life, okay? Uh, that means, again, one more time, a unique feature of reality. Because we are, you know, composited inside the 3D environment, this, uh, this can happen. Otherwise, uh, it would be uh, a layer-based compositing like everybody else does. So uh, let's get rid of the lens flares and the fire. And then uh, we can go to somewhere else. You see, I was near the piano and now I'm in the middle uh, room. But with reality, we can switch between uh, completely different environments, right? Uh, and uh, we, we would be a little bit more <laughs> waiting, no problem. But uh, here is a totally different environment, OK? It's a total different rendering. And we have no problems with Reality 2.0 switching in between them. Mehmet, can you zoom uh, to my head a little bit? And keep me in the frame, please. Thank you. Go, 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 go. And now, my friend Mehmet, uh, that's enough. That's enough. Not too much. And we'll pull focus naturally, as uh, he would do, OK? So we, we calibrate uh, the depth of field, the focal distance of the lenses, so we know where to focus in graphics as well. So it's not an operation over there. Uh, we just have this connection over the tracking data. Uh, it's just the uh, camera operator doing his usual business as always. So this is pretty important, guys, because 
Uh, yeah, Mehmet, you can just show around a little bit, but don't, don't move, the, move the arm, okay? So the thing uh, here important is, now your producers and directors will be able to do uh, some interesting stuff, some stuff that they would never, you know, uh, think uh, doing. So reality will help you, uh, you know, doing that. Everybody is asking us uh, questions like, hey, you can do for the real, but can you do new uh, type of uh, sets and studios? Well, guys, um, we do most of the time focus on for the real because we're the only ones that can do it right. Okay, that's a big deal. So that's why we are, you know, interested in it. But of course, like this one, we have a futuristic set uh, that was provided by our uh, integration partner, NEP. It's a simple one, uh, but as you can see, there is a, a rotating wall. There are some screens on it. Uh, Umut, can you press the play videos on the right side? The, on the right side, near the sink. Yep. Um, we, we can wrote any, any information over there. The same rules apply, by the way. It is the uh, reflections, refractions and everything. And if you want, we can give you bars and uh, other uh, text kind of stuff where you want to do you know, data driven. So my answer to that question is, can you do uh, news and data driven? Yes, because what can be, we're based on a game engine, what can be more interactive and data driven than a game engine? Okay, uh, this is reality and thank you very much for watching.